Let's go to God. Gracious and loving God, there is none like you. We are so grateful for your love, how it <clears throat> reaches out and touches us, for how it has always been reaching out to touch us, to help us know what, what you, how you are in our lives and want for our lives and care for us. You are drawing us close to you to help us live the life that is fulfilling, the life that you want us to live. We are so grateful, Lord, for all of the different ways that you have come to us before we knew you and after we knew you. We, 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 we have come to see that you are, are so good, so great, so loving, reaching out at all times, drawing us in. When we wander and stray, you are there pulling us back. In times of trouble and, and temptation, you are there to remind us that your love is the answer to everything that we see. So... Come to us now, Lord. Come to us in this worship and allow us to remain in your love, to live your love, to be your love, to fulfill all that you have called us to be and do in your love. In Jesus' name. Well, the scripture lesson today Come on in. Yeah, come on in. We're not interrupting anything. Come on in right now and have a seat over here. This will be good. The scripture today is from the Gospel of John. And it's the 15th chapter. It's probably a scripture that you've heard before. It should be unfamiliar to us who are in the church. It's the 15th chapter beginning with the 9th verse through the 17th verse. It goes like this. I'm reading from today's New International Version. As the Father has loved me, so I loved you. Now, remain in my love. Is that what it said? You got ahead of me. I think that's what it said. Yep. Remain in my love. Yes. 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 If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because servants do not know their master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything I have learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. An elementary school teacher was giving a, a science lesson on magnets and magnetism. And the teacher thought that she had a really great way to start off the class and to help the students think about, you know, the, the attraction of magnetism and, and how that works. And so she asked the, the, a very simple question. She says, uh, uh, my name starts with M and there's six letters in it and it's always picking up things. Who am I? And one little kid in the class was waving his hands excitedly and, and said, I know. And, and so the teacher nodded and the kid said, you're a mother. <laughs> well, 
wasn't the answer the teacher was looking for. But you know, mothers, mothers are always doing things for us, aren't they? And it's right that we should be thinking of our mothers. You know, mothers are picking up after us and cooking for us and getting us ready for school and doing all kinds of, of things like that. You know, but but sometimes our mothers can look out for us too much. Uh, there was a mother whose son was preparing to, to go to college and, and she wrote this letter to the president of the college. She said, Dear Sir, my son has been accepted for admission to your college and soon will be leaving me. I am writing to ask that you give personal attention to the selection of his roommate. I want to be sure that the person he will spend the next few years with is not the kind of person who smokes, drinks, uses foul language, or is a troublemaker or rabble-rouser. I hope you will understand why I am appealing to you directly. You see, this is the first time my son will be away from home, except for the three years he was in the Marines. <laughs> Sincerely, he was. Well, we've all known helicopter parents, you know. We've known people that, that, uh, that, that who hover over their children way too much and hover over their children way too long. Uh, uh, the problem with helicopter parents is that the children quite often do not learn how to be independent. They don't learn how to make decisions on their own. So they haven't learned from their mistakes because these helicopter parents are always buzzing around and, and controlling and interfering. And, and, and if a child makes a mistake, a helicopter parent will swoop down and correct the mistake and sometimes scold the child for the mistake. Well, Rabbi David Walt uh, has, talks about another way of parenting. Rabbi David Walt says that, that there's a better way of parenting, and he calls it helium parenting. That's why I got this prop here with me. Because a helium parent holds on to uh, uh, the string of a balloon like a child. The whole healing parent holds on to their ch children like a child holds on to the string of a balloon. You know, uh, they let them rise. You know, they let them float on their own, but yet they keep a firm grasp on the string. Uh, you know, as, as the child gets older, the string gets a little longer, and the, 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 the balloon is able, the child is able to float a little higher. And, and, and so, so the helium parent, instead of hovering over the child all the time, is, is holding the child lightly from, uh, from below. Well... Helicopter parents produce children, you know, that they can behave well, but, but, but what are they learning, you know? Helicopter parents, sometimes the children are behaving well because out of fear, out of fear that, 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 that the, the, the parent is going to swoop down and, and correct them and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, chastise them. But a helium mom is going to produce children, hopefully, that are more competent at, you know, making decisions for themselves. Because the helium mom is going to give the child latitude to float in the wind a little bit and make their own mistakes and learn from their own mistakes so that they've got the ability to say, well, that didn't work out and I need to figure out a better way to, to do this. And then maybe get some advice from the parent about the the, the best way to do things. You know, if you coddle a child, you're going to get a coddled child. But if you let the child soar, you're going to get an adult. Now, let's take this imagery of helicopter parenting and helium parenting, and let's transfer this to uh, uh, talking about how God is in our lives. Let's, uh, let's uh, think about how God makes faithful disciples in our lives so that, so that we can grow to be the person 
that God wants us to be. Um, you know, there are some people that view God as a helicopter God. I mean, God's constantly hovering over us as a helicopter and waiting to shine a spotlight on our mistakes. That's the way these people view God. God is ready there to highlight our misdeeds. And, and they, these folks see God as a, as a stern God, a stern ruler, the ultimate micromanager, surveying our lives often with disapproval and, and swift to mete out punishment. But that's not my view of God, nor do I think it's the, the biblical view of God. God isn't interested in micromanaging our lives. God wants to give us free, God gives us free will and is content for us to make our own decision because God wants us to grow into loving God and loving God out of our own free will instead of loving God because we feel like, you know, if we don't do what God wants, we're going to be swiftly punished. Um, God, God is there wanting us to learn how to be connected to God and learn how to be connected to God out of our free will. Learn how to be connected to God because we understand the goodness that comes in our lives when we are connected to God. You all know my story. You know how many, many years ago, you know, I was running around on the streets. I was doing drugs. I, a lot of crazy things happened in my life when I was not connected to God. And I flunked out of college, and all sorts of other things happened when, when I was living this kind of life. I was not connected to God. And, 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 and I'm convinced it's because I wasn't connected is why all of these parts of my life started to fall apart. When I gave my life to God, when Jesus came into my life, you know, things started to change. And the pieces started to come back together. And it was my choice because I wanted that connection with God. And yes, there was discipline involved. Yes, there were things that I had to do. I had to make some decisions to, to leave parts of my old life behind. I had to say, you know, I can't live this way anymore and be connected. I began to see that being connected to God was a greater benefit than just running around and doing whatever I wanted to do. So, you know, I think that's, God is there for us. And, and I was able to turn to God. In, in reality, God never really leaves us. I do think that God holds on to us, kind of like uh, uh, holding on to the string of a, of a helium balloon. God lets us dance in the currents of the, of the, 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 the times and the days and, and what we're involved in. And, 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 you know, John Wesley has a word for this. He says, before you even knew there was a God. There was provenient grace. And I believe that provenient grace tugs on us. And we can feel that even before we've ever accepted God into our hearts. We can feel that tug just a little bit on, on, on our lives. And, and God, is, you know, God is, is like that through the Holy Spirit calling us back. Calling us, say, get connected. And you know, when you're going through really turbulent times, tough times, troubles, when you're in great temptation, sometimes you might feel that tug just a little bit more to, 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 to try to get connected to God. <laughs> Today's gospel lesson is talking to us about that connection. God. Today's gospel lesson uh, 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 shares with us how God is there with us in such a, a wonderful way. And, and 
What I love about today's Gospel lesson and for Mother's Day is I think there's a lot of parallels that we see in the Gospel lesson today and how a mother cares for us. Let me share some of these with you. God's love is like a mother's love for you in that it is specific to you. It is specific to you. Today's scripture says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. God chose you. He loves you. He wants you to, to be connected to him. And, and, and so, you know, it, it, it's like a mom's love. You know, I mean, I, how about you? When I was growing up, I loved it when my mom singled me out for special love or special praise. I mean, I'm an old man now, and I still love it when my mom singles me out for special praise and, and those sorts of things. And, and, and uh, you know, <clears throat> Jesus says we are chosen by Him and chosen by God in the same way that God chose Jesus. That love that God has for you, it's also a love that gives you a job. It gives me a job. You know, um, I don't know about you, I loved it when I was growing up and my mom gave me a special job to do. You know, she might have me standing beside her in the kitchen and we're baking cookies together, or she'll have me, you know, put my finger in the, on the string when she was tying up a package, you know. It just made me feel so good that I could help her and, and, and be there with her and, 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 do, and be involved in the things that, that she, was, she was doing. Um, you know, you know. Sometimes she made me do some chores, and I wasn't always happy about doing the chores. You know, but I usually did them anyway because I knew that they needed to be done. And who was it that was asking me to do those chores? It was my mom. It was mom. You know, the one who I loved being with. God loves us in a very similar way. You know, God has given us a responsibility to do as well. God has, has he's given us a job. God's given us a purpose. You know, God's, uh, God wants us to be a part of what God's doing, and, and, and God has told us, we see it in, in, in today's scripture, Jesus says that we are to bear fruit. That's our job. We're to bear fruit that lasts. Uh, and and, and, and the, the fruit that we are to bear is His love. The fruit that we're to bear is the love with which He loves us. That's what we're to manifest, to show forth in our lives. You know, we're called to remain in God's love. It says that in today's scripture. Now remain in my love, says Jesus. God's unconditional love and mom's unconditional love, you know, there's, there, there's a lot of similarities. You know, mom and God are both always going to love us. Always going to love us. But we only benefit from that love when we remain in that love. Now, think about this. Can't you hear your mom telling you, so now play nice with your brother or, or watch out for your sister or, or they t give you some other thing to do, you know, to now help out with this or with that. And, and, and what happened when you disobeyed? You got put in time out. Sometimes worse, but you got put in time out. You know? But, you know, but we remain in God's love when we love like God loves. You know, our mom is wanting us to love and to yes. do the right yes. thing. Yes. You know, God wants us to love and to do the right thing. This is my commandment, said Jesus, that you love one another as I have loved you. And guess what? God loves us enough that God wants us to share in His work, in His purpose of loving one another. 
That's why we're here. We're to do, you know, we're to be co-creators with God in loving one another the way He has loved us. And that love, though, is a, you need to know is also a sacrificial love. It's a, it, it, it's, a, it's a love that calls us to, to love others greater than, uh, you know, than, than, what can I say? I don't want to say this. It, 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 it's a love that, that loves in a way that really looks out for what is, what is best. What's going to help that person mature and grow and become the best that, that, that they can become? Jesus said, no one has greater love than this than to lay down one's life. When we think about what our mothers did for us, I mean, there's a, a, a lot of mothers that have, have given up a lot of their desires, a lot of the things that they wanted to do to be able to take care and, 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 and raise their kids up so that their kids could have the best opportunities. And, 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 and God's love, God doesn't love us any, any less. God wants us to become the best that we can become. Become the best in loving like God loves. Didn't Jesus lay down his life for us that we might have life? All of us uh, all of this is suggesting that it's not the helicopter God, but it's the helium God with his hand on the string that is the God that allows us to grow and mature and to become the kind of disciple that he wants us to be, freely choosing to love one another as he loves us. You know, sometimes we're, we're there, you felt the tug of the Holy Spirit, you know, pulling you down a little bit, pulling you back a little bit, saying, get, get connected. And there are times we feel the slap and God is letting us kind of figure our way out in this world and how do we love in the ways that, that he wants us to love. But God's hand's always there. God's not going to let you go. When you are ready to say, God, I want to be more connected, you know, it, 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 you're pulled back in. And you're pulled and you're, and you're, made, and you're brought closer to God. You know, it's uh, this relationship with God. You know, it, it, it's complicated. And, and it can be as complicated sometimes as our relationship with our mothers. But it's a relationship that's based on love. It's a relationship that is, is a, a, a firm but gentle hand that's always there holding on to the string, the line of the balloon. In any case, on this Mother's Day, let's give thanks. Let's give thanks for all the people in our lives, all the women, all the mothers, all the people who have been willing to love us in the way that God loves us. Amen. Amen.